All right, ladies, I'm going to be showing you how you can get rid of that cellulite, that embarrassing loose skin and fat pores, as you can see on these girls right here. Now, you don't need to be overweight to have cellulite. As you can see with this girl right here, who's fairly thin, has cellulite visibly on her leg. Now, this is not attractive looking. And these three girls actually have one thing in common. They all have high body fat percentages, not necessarily to where they're unhealthy, but they just don't have a lot of muscle tone either. But it doesn't have, to have, doesn't have everything to do with muscle tone. It has a lot to do with nutrition as well, uh, which I'll talk about later in this video here. Now, you maybe tried doing cardio already to try to burn the cellulite off. You tried body weight exercise like the bridges to try to target the hamstrings. You tried doing lightweight exercises already. And, but despite doing all of this, you haven't seen your cellulite vanish. This is because cellulite has a genetic component to it. There are some women who are more susceptible to creating more cellulite than others just because they store more fat and have looser skin. But cellulite is caused when loose to fat deposits are pushed up through the collagen fibers and connective tissue, which the collagen fibers in women are much more spaced out than in men. This is why women are more susceptible to creating cellulite than men. And if your connective tissue is loose by not having muscle development to strengthen these, then it's going to be even easier for these fat deposits to make it up to the surface, as you can see in the diagram to the right here. Um, obviously, if you have much more body fat on your, on your body, you're going to be more susceptible to creating cellulite. So nutrition is very key to, crea to, creating, loose, um, to creating healthy skin, tight skin, which I'm going to go over on some of these vitamins here. Now, you want to get this part of a balanced diet. Vitamin A, carrots, aguaje, yogurt, mangoes, and sweet potatoes are some of the foods you want to get for, for vitamin A source. I'm not going to get into the aguaje debate of trying to get a bigger butt with aguaje because that's just nonsense. Vitamin E, good sources are tomatoes, oils, sunflower seeds, nuts, and almonds. Uh, nuts, almonds being one of the best, and whole grain cereals, of course, vitamin E. Antioxidants, good sources for that are pretty much any type of berry. These things will help clean your system out, keep your body healthy. Any type of berry, strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, even plums. Fatty acids, omega-3 and omega-6. You can get them from flax seeds, salmon, one of the best fishes, but pretty much any fish in oil, walnuts. You also want to look at avocado. Not all fat is bad for your system. Some fat is good, obviously. Avocado, good for uh, lowering your cholesterol and good for your skin. Whole wheat, as well as high-fiber foods. I've mentioned this in many of my videos. For building a strong body, you want to get nice whole wheat uh, foods in as well as fiber. You want to eat everything in moderation, of course. Like, for instance, you don't want to be eating a bunch of avocados and tuna, obviously, because obviously one will make, you, will make you pretty fat and the other one will be dangerous to your health. You want to eat your foods in moderation, of course. That's why I posted my power foods. So you want to stay hydrated, though. You want to drink lots of water because if you de dehydrate, that's one of the ways the cellulite is formed. You want to stay hydrated. Green tea, uh, fruit juices, but you want to stay hydrated. You can use massages, you can use creams to try to help that cellulite, but you really got to use cardio, weight training, as well as um, your nutrition. You want to keep your blood circulating. Bad circulation is what causes cellulite as well. So you got to do cardio exercises, you got to stay active, you got to keep moving. That's the problem. That what A lot of women today have cellulite because they're inactive. They go to a chair, they go to an office, they sit in a computer all day. You got to stay active. So try running on a treadmill, try jump roping, plyometrics, anything to keep your heart pumping. You probably want to do about 30 minutes a day. Excellent weight training would be, for instance, something like a Romanian deadlift. Excellent for targeting the hamstrings, as you can see in this video right here. You can also use the uh, kettlebell swings. You can also use, of course, the bridges, the one-legged bridge, the barbell bridge. Um, you can also use a stability bar right here to, to target the hamstrings. You also want to try to perform compound exercises like the squat right here. Now you can see how to perform these squats in my exercises for a bigger butt video. You can also watch my bigger hips and upper butt workout video to see how to perform a lot of these different exercises. These, And you can also perform uh, serious ten, my serious 10 minute ab video as well as my lower abs video if you have some loose skin around your stomach area. You can also look at my chest workout video as well as my chest and shoulders workout video if you have some loose skin on your upper body. If you perform these exercises as well as the diet, you will get much tighter skin. Now, ladies, you have to be aware of the, of the underwear you're wearing because this also creates cellulite if your underwear is too tight. This girl right here, you can see they're digging into her skin. They're too tight. They're much too small for her body. And you can see those elastic bands are digging into her skin, cutting off circulation, creating cellulite. So the remedy to this, they say, is to wear thongs. Now, thongs put you at a much higher risk of catching a genital infection, namely a urinary infection, if you don't have good hygiene or keep wearing clean thongs. So an example to this would be a lot of women wear thongs underneath their athletic wear when they work out. So you might want to go back home, ladies, and change into a clean pair of underwear, a clean pair of thong, and um, that way you're, you don't go throughout the rest of the day wearing that same thong that you worked out in, putting you at a higher risk of catching a genital infection. So as long as you keep good hygiene, keep wearing clean thongs, thongs shouldn't be any problem. Um, they do make the female body look very attractive, 
But I must say, if you if you show your thong off in public like these girls right here, it makes it tends to cheapen the girl and makes her seem promiscuous. Definitely not ladylike. So depending on what type of image you're trying to portray, you don't want to be showing your thong off in public. Be aware of if your thong is showing in public. You want to keep that private. Boy shorts are probably the best remedy to the situation. They look very attractive on you ladies, and you don't have to worry about genital infections or image problems with those. 100% cotton underwear. You can never go wrong with that as well. It really doesn't matter what type of undergarment you're wearing, you know, a fashion style, ladies, because you're going to look good in anything you wear. Trust me, ladies. Anything you wear is, is, is attractive on you. As long as you have the body and you get the body through exercise and diet. So as long as you're aware of, you know, the, um, of the undergarments you're wearing, make sure you're not wearing, you know, tight underwear. And make sure you're not wearing a tight bra because you can create cellulite on your upper body just the same way. So make sure you're aware of your, of your undergarments. Make sure you're exercising. Make sure you're weightlifting, you know, doing some type of resistance training. And doing cardio to keep circulation going and having those nutrition, make sure you're getting those vitamins in, you'll create significantly tighter skin.